Hey, welcome back to the workshop. So it's September now, and cold, wet weather is right around the corner. It's time to weatherproof my boots again. But I don't know which compound I should use. There's so many really good ones out there, and I'm going to put them to the test. We're going to find out what's the best weatherproofing compound I can put on my boots to keep my feet warm and dry for this coming winter. So what are we working with here? We're going to test Snow Seal. We're going to test Hubbard Shoe Grease. We're going to test Obanoff's Leather Protector. Heavy duty. We're going to test mink oil. And finally, we're going to test my cobbled together custom homemade mix of uh, beeswax, pine tar, and lanolin. The leather I'll be testing this stuff on is 5 ounce vegetable tan. And this is probably a little bit heavier than most boots are made out of, but this is the thinnest leather I've got, so that's what I'm going to go with. The next thing to do is heat the leather up with a heat gun, just a little bit. This helps the compounds really absorb into the leather and not just sit on the surface. I'm going to apply three coats of treatment to each piece of leather. I want to make sure that each piece of leather is thoroughly saturated with compound to make it good and ready for the test to come. So now each one of these has got three coats of treatment melted in. We can immediately see the snow seal is a little bit lighter in color than the others. Curiously, the Hubbards, the Obanoffs, and the others all look about the same. I had expected the Hubbards piece to come out darker than the others, because Hubbard shoe grease is made with pine tar, and it was clearly much darker in the can. For the first test, I'm going to dispense approximately one milliliter of plain tap water onto each piece of leather, and then we're going to wait and see what happens. First, the plain untreated leather is tested with the water to kind of get a baseline idea of what happens to leather with nothing on it. This piece of leather actually does a better job of resisting the water than I had expected. After more than 10 minutes, the one milliliter of water has still not completely absorbed into the raw, untreated leather. That's actually pretty good. We're going to use that as our baseline. Let's move on. Immediately, I can see that the treated leathers are doing a much better job of resisting the water. The water, at first, just wants to bead up and roll right off. At first, nothing is happening. I'm going to let these sit for 10 minutes or so, and then come back and check on the results. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, and so far, every one of these is working really well. After 10 minutes, out of the treated leathers, 
only the snow seal is showing any signs of water getting through the treatment. I guess the only thing to do for now is continue to wait and see if uh, given enough time if any of this water penetrates through at all. All right, so it's been more than a half hour, and apart from the snow seal, all of our other leather uh, treatments are looking pretty good. The water doesn't seem to be soaking in at all. So it's time to move up to something stronger. Uh, around here in the wintertime, one of the things that my boots have to deal with is road salt, mud, and sometimes even motor oil. So we're going to make up a blend of some really nasty stuff and slap it on our leather and see how it performs. First into the mix is a little sidewalk ice melter, one of the cornerstones of every winter here in the northern USA. I should note that this is a calcium chloride salt rather than a sodium chloride salt, but I don't think it matters. It's probably still just as hard on your leather. Next up is a little 10W30 conventional motor oil. After that, a little pure roadside gravel and sand, because why the hell not? This mixture is meant to represent the absolute worst conditions that my leather boots could encounter in just about any environment I choose to stand in. Man, that is some nasty stuff. I'm going to let this sit on the leather for a good 20 minutes to half hour or so and then wipe off what's left and we'll take a look at the results. All right, it's been a good half hour. Time to clean this off and see what I can see. Immediately I can see that none of these products have done a very good job of resisting the motor oil. It looks like it's soaked right in. Maybe the snow seal did a little bit better job of resisting the oil but even it hasn't done all that great. At this point, I would definitely say that Snow Seal is better at resisting oil than all of the other products. Which is interesting, because Snow Seal was the only one that was actually worse at repelling water. Honestly, I really expected there to be a lot more variation in the results here. I think the next thing to do is let this stuff dry out for a couple of days and come back and check it again to see if there are any changes. Okay, so what's going on here now? I've wiped off the mixture of uh, motor oil and road salt and gravel and uh, we've let these pieces of leather dry for a good four days. And uh, now that we've done that, the results are a little bit inconclusive. When we compare the raw, untreated piece of leather to this brand new, untouched piece, we can see that the oil has pretty well soaked in. And if we turn this over, it's obvious from the change in color that it's soaked all the way through the leather to the other side. Moving over to the snow seal, we can see that it's a little bit lighter here, and the oil hasn't soaked in quite as much. This is also reflected, and when we turn this over, it actually looks pretty close to our untouched piece of leather. Very little oil has soaked through at all, which is really interesting, because when we tested this with just water before, water looked like it was going through the snow seal a little bit worse than it was going through these other treatments. Um, so apparently, as far as I can conclude, uh, snow seal is maybe less good at resisting water but better at resisting oil and salt and maybe other contaminants. Anyway, moving on. Um, the Hubbard shoe grease looks very dark. We've absorbed almost all of the oil that was sitting on here. And when we turn this over, it's pretty evident that the oil has went through and through. You know, compare this to the snow seal, and you can really see the difference. This is all that motor oil and probably some of the salt. There's still some, some grit and gravel there. The snow seal has resisted it very well. Moving over, the uh, Obanos leather protector looks very similar to the results from the Hubbard shoe grease. 
both top and bottom, I'd say those are about the same. In fact, from here on down, all of these are very similar. The Minka Oil, the Obanoths, the Hubbards, and even my mix of beeswax, pine tar, and lanolin are almost all the same. They don't seem to resist oil uh, well at all. Probably I should have tested these with the oil and the salt and things separately, but that can be an experiment for another video. I really expected things like the Hubbards and the Obanoths to outperform the Snow Seal. Um, so it's really kind of a surprising result that the Snow Seal has resisted the oil so well. One of the other somewhat surprising results in this test is how similarly the performance was between the Hubbards, the Obanoths, the Mink Oil, and the other kind of more heavily waxed uh, based products. Honestly, with the, uh, the kind of reputation that Obanos has, I really expected it to perform better than it did. So I guess that's all I got for this experiment. Um, overall, I guess my big takeaway from this is they all work pretty good against water, and they don't really work that good at all against things like oil. But that's not what they're intended for. These are really just waterproofers. So I guess it doesn't matter which one you get. They're all pretty good. Um, if I had to recommend one, I would just say get whatever's cheaper and uh, more easily available in your area. So I hope you found that interesting, and uh, I'll be right back here in the workshop with another video just as soon as I can. See you then. Thank mm -hmm. you.